So why don't, uh, why don't we get started? I'm Dr. Green. I am CEO of R3 Stem Cell. Uh, we work nationwide with clinics uh, that are centers of excellence and offer amniotic stem cell therapy. Today's topic is the 411 on avoiding surgery with amniotic stem cell therapy. So the goals uh, of this presentation, and I promise it will not be one of these, you know, hours long uh, presentations. I'm just going to give you all the basics so you have a very good uh, background on the current state of affairs with regenerative medicine. Uh, I'll clarify how the FDA looks at stem cell treatments in the U.S. and uh, delineate the differences in the available stem cell treatments on the market. And then lastly, to set the record straight on amniotic therapy. So I'll make you a promise. If you stay with us till the end of the webinar, you will get a special offer that will save you a considerable amount towards an amniotic stem cell treatment, okay? Also, over the next half hour, you will learn a lot about amniotic stem cell therapy and walk away with a very good understanding about the treatment. So 10, 20, 30 years ago, plastic surgery, well, more like 20, 30 years ago, plastic surgery was mostly operative, about 90%. But as these new treatments such as Botox and fillers and cool sculpting and things like that have become more and more commonplace. Now it's 90% non-operative. So we've seen this shift in how a medical specialty can change the way that it works. And that's what we're seeing with regenerative medicine. We're starting to see that trend and we will continue to see that trend over the next 10 to 20 years. So a lot of people, when they do a webinar, they spend a lot of slides and a lot of time going over who they are and how great they are and how great their company is. I'm just going to give you one slide about myself, all right? Um, I went to med school at University of Virginia. I grew up in Southern Virginia in the uh, uh, boondocks. Uh, I trained as an orthopedic surgeon at Brown University. Uh, years ago, I got my MBA at Arizona State University. I left practice 10 years ago to pursue full-time business interests. I founded R3 Stem Cell about five years ago. Currently, we have over 25 centers of excellence around the country that have literally performed thousands of successful amniotic procedures. Um, I'm married. This is me. There's my beautiful wife, Debbie, my in-laws, and then we have four kids. Samantha's 16, Carson's 14, Ari is three, and then little Charlie is, she's a, about a year and a half now, okay? And we live in Phoenix, um, just love it here. All right, moving on. So surgery should pretty much always be considered your last resort. Arthritis never killed anybody. It's not a deadly disease, right? Conservative treatment should be exhausted before the quality of life decision is made to have an operation. Traditionally, the available options for tendonitis, arthritis, sports injuries have helped a lot with pain relief, but they have not helped repair the damage. Cortisone doesn't fix anything. It's just a humongous anti-inflammatory that provides pain relief for a certain period of time. But the paradigm is changing. So first of all, I'm going to stop the poll. Um, the answer that you all gave was false, which is Great, because amniotic fluid on the market is not all the same. Uh, I'm going to go back into the chat room. Okay. So regenerative medicine offers both repair and pain relief, okay, among other things, symptom relief if we're talking about COPD or, or, or um, kidney disease. But it used to be a lot of these treatments we offered were a Band-Aid, whether it's a medication that didn't really modify the disease, it just helped put a Band-Aid on it. Or let's say it's knee arthritis, you get a cortisone injection. That's a Band-Aid for a few weeks to a few months. But now what we're looking at is an actual treatment that can modify the disease, help repair and regenerate, and give long-term pain relief. So why is regenerative medicine now mainstream? Well, first of all, it works. We have more studies coming out every month showing just how well it works. There was a study last month on erectile dysfunction of all things. There was one a few months before that on uh, pelvic pain. Uh, there have been great studies coming out on 
the typical uh, culprits, knee arthritis, uh, spinal arthritis, degenerative disc disease, you name it, uh, studies are coming out uh, showing that it's working well. Another important factor is that it's very safe. If you look at amniotic treatments, we've done with our providers thousands of procedures, never had a rejection reaction at all, okay? I think we've had like one superficial inje- uh, in- infection. Um, other than that, pretty much nothing. The results are often long lasting, which makes it very popular. It's effective for a lot of conditions. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a moment. It's, and it's much less expensive than having a major surgery. So we're facing a new normal. Regenerative medicine is replacing the Band-Aid method of medicine where you can now treat the actual problem. Uh, we're looking at um, before when you had a cartilage, uh, well, a tendon or a ligament injury, Let's say you you injure a ligament in your knee, on the outside of your knee, like the lateral collateral. It will heal, but it heals back to about 80% of what it used to be, okay? So it never heals back to 100%. However, with regenerative medicine procedures, it can not only heal faster, it can heal more than that 80%, okay? So that's been very exciting uh, in the field uh, for both patients and providers, you have people who can get back to doing what they want to do. And now you have treatments that actually fill that gap, you know, between non-operative and operative with something that's actually disease modifying. So there are several regenerative options that are available. First and foremost, you have uh, nutraceuticals, which are available at Walmart. I mean, they're over the counter. We don't really know how exactly effective they are. There are some studies, but this is not what I'm going to talk about today. Okay. PRP therapy is platelet-rich plasma therapy. Uh, It involves a simple blood draw that's then uh, spun, and uh, the middle part is then taken and and injected into your problem area, knee, shoulder, whatnot, and that works very well. One of the things that's becoming more and more common, either in conjunction with PRP or amniotic, is prolotherapy, or something called prolozone therapy, where a needle is placed into the problem area and some saline is injected, and that doesn't involve any really medication, but it does provoke an inflammation reaction, which can help heal the area. So what a lot of people will do is they'll uh, do the prolotherapy or maybe inject some ozone um, into the knee, for instance, and then inject the amniotic because then you have that spark, that signal to help it do its thing. Visco supplementation, you've probably heard of. It's really Synvisc or Hyalgan. It's a hyaluronic acid treatment. Um, it was FDA approved back in 2000. Well, I think it was around 2000, uh, but it's in, covered by most major insurance. Um, it's either a one-time treatment or it might be a series of three to five injections, but that is um, being covered by most insurances. And then now we have stem cell therapies, um, which we're going to get into in just a moment. Specialties where uh, regenerative medicine is being utilized are getting, this list gets longer and longer all the time. Pain management, orthopedic, and chiropractic are kind of in the same realm. Then you have family practice and internal medicine. Then you have the aesthetic side of things, plastics, med spa. Then you have more systemic types of issues, cardiology, lung, pulmonary, um, maybe uh, uh, nephrology, the kidney, um, spine, and neurosurgery. There's a lot being used in ophthalmology for the eyes. Pelvic pain for gynecology, more and more popular. Erectile dysfunction and urology. Foot and ankle and wound healing, podiatry, uh, and then neurology, you're talking about Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, autism, MS. You know, it's just spanning the specialties now. There's two major target markets um, if you want to break it down. And I would look at it as a double uh, a bell curve, okay? Younger, you're talking about mostly uh, athletes, either amateur or elite. The interesting thing is that all the professional leagues don't have a problem with the current uh treatments that are available. And the reason is that none of them are a performance enhancing, quote, drug. Okay. They don't act like a steroid or whatnot. They basically just help the body do the healing it's supposed to do anyway. Um, So they've been okay with it. It can really help young folks avoid surgery for meniscal tears, labral tears, ligament injuries, tendon, degenerative disc disease. You know, it's a a long list. And I'm just going to give you a couple examples. So we've gotten calls from um, parents of um, high school seniors who have, let's say, a, a, an athletic scholarship to a university and the shoulder's hurting or 
you know, the knee is problematic. They don't want to lose the scholarship. They really want the, the, the child really wants to participate. So instead of going to surgery, you know, they'll have a regenerative procedure and potentially save, you know, the, the pain, relieve the pain, save the scholarship, save their career in athletics. Um, you know, what's a scholarship worth? It's a great way to get an education, right? So we get those calls from time to time. Um, acute or chronic injuries, it's applicable to both golfers or tennis elbow or ligament sprain. And that's the younger population. Then when you get into the older population, most commonly it's arthritis we're dealing with, whether it's rheumatoid, degenerative, post-traumatic, um, overuse conditions, whether it's a rotator cuff tendinopathy, Achilles or an elbow issue, spinal arthritis can also help with fail back surgery. For instance, if you have a surgery and then a few years go by and you have degeneration of the adjacent segments, regenerative procedures can be awesome for helping you to avoid the need for further surgery. Non-healing wounds, there's some great studies out there showing how well it works. We have a whole video about stem cell therapy for wound healing. Uh, also diabetic or peripheral neuropathy, it works great for. And then in the aesthetic side for hair loss and wrinkles. All right, so the most common indications for treatment on the left, you can see arthritis, sports injuries, overuse injuries, cartilage defects, wound healing, and then ophthalmology. Ophthalmology could be a chemical burn, could be dry eyes, uh, and there's some other issues that, uh, where it really helps with avoiding um, adhesions and scar tissue. And there are codes for that, um, so insurance will cover it. Same with wound healing, there are codes for that too. So it's also being offered for a slew of other conditions, RSD, diabetes, COPD, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, so on, occipital neuralgia, erectile dysfunction, incontinence, pelvic pain, macular degeneration, and kidney failure. We have some physicians who offer a, a, a kidney protocol that's helped keep like 90 some percent of those off dialysis if they're uh, not bef beyond uh, stage three. All right, so now let's start getting into the actual products. And then we'll you know, talk about why amniotic is as great as it is. But on the left side, you see the regenerative products that involve harvesting. And on the right side, uh, you have no harvesting, okay? On the left, you have a PRP therapy we talked about. It's a simple blood draw. There's no stem cells in PRP therapy, okay? It can, it's chemotactic. It can call in the body stem cells, but in and of itself, no stem cells. It does have about seven to eight growth factors, which are good at also recruiting stem cells and acting as a scaffold and building blocks uh, for repair. There's a kit involved in PRP. So the blood gets drawn, it goes into the kit, it goes into this spinning machine called a centrifuge for about 12 minutes. And then the middle of what comes out is called the Buffy coat. And that's drawn out and that's what's injected. So if you have maybe 30 cc's taken out of your arm, about three to five cc's will be injected back. So, you know, it's a small percentage. Adipose stands for basically fat cells, and that's obtained through a liposuction. It has a very high cell count, millions and millions of stem cells. <clears throat> the problem is when you put it into the kit and you spin it, and then you inject it into the knee or wherever you're going to be treating, about 80 some percent of those cells die within 24 hours. So that's a problem, right? I mean, what good is having a humongous stem cell count if they're all going to die within a day? So that's been the knock against adipose. Plus, either adipose or bone marrow, you have an older you know, patient. The stem cells, for some reason, we don't exactly know why, they're not as good as differentiating into the cells needed you know, whether it's a cartilage cell or a tendon or whatnot, as um, amniotic. So bone marrow involves, um, you can see a picture of one here, where the needle, it's a pretty decent sized needle, goes into your hip bone called the iliac crest. It's actually part of your pelvis. So it can be fairly painful. Um, it does use also a kit and a centrifuge. But we did a study when I was at Brown University, and basically they showed that when you put the needle into the iliac crest and you withdraw, the most stem cells come out in the first two cc's, two milliliters, and the rest is mostly blood. So what they've tried to do over the years is increase the amount of little holes in the needle on the sides called fenestration. 
to get more stem cells. And that's helped somewhat, but there's only so much you're going to get out of the bone marrow. Um, we'll talk about that more in a minute. But so the ones that are, have no harvesting would be amniotic which amniotic has a lot of stuff in it, but the main things it has is hyaluronic acid, cytokines, over 70 growth factors. There are a significant amount of stem cells if it's um, processed properly. We'll talk about that. Another product is umbilical cord blood. That's the newest product. It's amniotic and placental based. We don't use it or recommend it in the clinics where our providers are. The reason is um, as follows, very basically, when you have umbilical cord blood, it has MHC factors in it, which it's not worth going into, but basically that's what can cause a rejection between the donor and the recipient. So we've never seen a, re a rejection reaction with amniotic, but when you add the cord blood into it, about 10% of recipients can have some kind of reaction. It might be a fever. It might be you know, much more serious than that. So we just don't recommend it. You have a product that's really, really good. You have like no complications. Then you go to something that has 10%. That's just not something we, we feel is safe enough. And then Synvisc, I put this in here because it is considered a regenerative product. Um, theoretically, it can help your joint um, push it to regenerate some cartilage. That actually hasn't been shown definitively, uh, but it's an insurance-based treatment that does uh, uh, have good outcomes. All right, how does the FDA look at stem cell therapy products? Well, they break it down into two categories, minimal or maximal manipulation. Now, it's not, it's, you don't need to understand the FDA verbiage. Like, it gets pretty complicated, but here's the basics. Minimal manipulation is okay in the U.S., all right? It's the same setting procedure. So, for instance, when you, you know, go to, like, Mexico, you have to go once, give your bone marrow, and then come back a month later. No, that's not the way minimal manipula manipulation works. There's no culturing to expand the cell counts. The material is withdrawn, like, say, your bone marrow. It's processed right there, and it's re-injected, okay? There's no enzymes or additives that might change the biologic structure of the material. And... The reason is, I'll explain it here under maximal manipulation. Maximal manipulation has not been deemed okay in the United States because what the FDA says is that you're taking a biologic and turning it into a drug. And you do that by either doing a culture to expand the cell counts or adding some kind of additive enzyme or something that changes the molecular structure of it and turns it into a drug. So, Anybody that's done that and gotten on the FDA radar has been sued um, and they've lost. So now if a company is going to do that, they don't do it in the U.S. They do it in Mexico, Cayman Islands, Caribbean, Panama, somewhere outside of the borders of the U.S. So when you look at the bone marrow kits and the adipose kits, those kits don't have any biologic in them until they're withdrawn from the body and, you know, put into them. So the kits themselves are typically 510K cleared. Um, so not too complicated, right? Now the amniotic tissue is not regulated as a drug. In this country, <clears throat> it's, um, we'll go through this in a minute. It's, it's obtained from consenting donors after a scheduled C-section. It goes through an FDA regulated lab. Um, and it's regulated as a biologic under the Code of Federal Regulations 1271. As a result, it can't be approved or denied because it doesn't have what they call a label. Every drug in this country that's FDA approved has a label, and that label could be for psoriasis or it could be for chronic migraines or whatever the label says. You can't even get that with a biologic. So... That's the deal with that. Now, has any of these products proven to be superior to others? Like, have they shown that bone marrow or, or adipose or amniotic is better than the others? The answer is no. They've all been shown to work well. So because of this, all things being beneficially equal, the products that don't require a harvesting to us make the most sense to utilize and to our centers of excellence. So that's why our centers of excellence use amniotic stem cell treatments. So here's a breakdown of the three types of treatment. 
bone marrow, adipose, or amniotic. So I looked at a ton of studies. Um, for bone marrow aspiration, um, this one study by Fernho showed a 29% incidence of chronic pain, um, and that's typically uh, in the area of the aspiration. It's a very sensitive area um, when you put the needle into the crest. Now, Banwart uh, found major complications occurred in 10% and minor complications occurred in 39%. And this could be anything from excessive bleeding to a fracture of the pelvis from putting the needle in to chronic pain uh, to infection. Uh, complications could be pain, nerve arterial injury, fracture, uh, perforation of the bowel, SI joint instability, and herniation of abdominal contents through ileum uh, defects. So moving into adipose, advocates say this method has the most stem cells of any other, which I mentioned earlier. While true initially, Rossinol showed that up to 80% of those fat grafts die very quickly. Now a newer method called uh, SVF, stromal vascular fraction, helps provide oxygenation to those cells, helps keep them viable. However, um, that treatment takes about six hours and it costs over twice as much as uh, amniotic. So that's a lot of reason why it's not as more popular. And then amniotic, you don't have any harvesting necessary. There's no ethical concerns because the baby's born, the baby's fine. And the mother's consented, the hospital's consented, and normally the amniotic fluid and the uh, placenta are thrown away. But in this case, they're collected after the scheduled C-section. They go to the FDA-regulated lab. The material has over 75 growth factors along with antimicrobial elements. These are fast procedures. Um, and if properly processed, the fluid has a significant number of stem cells, which I'll show you uh, how in, uh, in a second. So here's an overview of amniotic stem cell therapy. Uh, it's effective, it's safe, it's very easy to administer. The products are FDA regulated. They're tested for a complete array of diseases, including syphilis, hepatitis, HIV, cancer. Um, the lab that, that we have uh, also is regulated by the AATB, American Association of Tissue Banks. So between the FDA and AATB, you it tests for everything. There's no embryonic stem cells used. There's no ethical concerns as a result. It is minimal manipulation. Uh, fluid comes from consenting mothers after it's scheduled C-section. The fluid is processed at the lab, and then it's kept cryopreserved until usage. It only takes 10 minutes to thaw it out. So what's in it? Well, there's no steroid. Okay, so, you know, the rule like with steroid, you, you only want to inject every so often. You don't want to inject more than two or three joints at a time because of the steroid that gets into the bloodstream. You don't have any of those concerns here. You have a lot of hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is the uh, motor oil of our joints. There's over 75 growth factors which promote tissue regeneration. Cytokines are anti-inflammatory mediators, which is one of the main reasons why those with rheumatoid or psoriasis or lupus get immense relief with these treatments. Uh, there are a lot of stem cells in, if the product is processed properly. And there's a lot of other things like messenger RNA and exosomes. And what we like to say is that, you know, when you use our product with the amniotic stem cell, um, it's like the whole orchestra shows up, not just the wind section or the percussion section, but the whole orchestra, because you have such a broad variety of materials that, uh, it really helps with all aspects of repair and regeneration. So when you look at outcomes, we have about 35 videos on our YouTube channel looking at very specific things. Uh, one of them is stem cell therapy for um, knee arthritis, uh, shoulder conditions, um, wound healing, and you know, the list goes on and on. There have been so many professional athletes and 90% of them you'll never hear of because they don't tell anybody. They don't tell the media, they don't tell their team because it's not a PED and they don't have to. Um, there are athletes such as the, at the top here, this is Heinz Ward, used to play for the Steelers. They were in the playoffs years ago and he hurt his one of the collateral ligaments of his knee in week two of the playoffs. So normally that might keep somebody out for the rest of the whole thing, including the Super Bowl. He got a regenerative injection in his knee, out in the, around the ligament. It healed up within two weeks, and he played in the Super Bowl. He did really well. 
The most fascinating story is Bartolo Colon. He's in his mid forties now. He's still pitching, but about seven, eight years ago, he was out of baseball. His shoulder was hurting him so bad. So he went to the Dominican. He had a stem cell injection in his shoulder within a year. He was back playing. He made the all-star game the next few years, and he got back to his elite status um, in Major League Baseball. So when you hear about stories like that, um, it just has exponentially expanded in, uh, in tennis and uh, soccer. Um, all the professional leagues allow it. So there is a lot of research to back up uh, amniotic. Here's just one of them with a large amount of patients, 275, looking at amniotic versus synbisc. So there's a, a ton of patients, but they looked at the first 90 days, three months, and they looked at those who had greater than 40% pain improvement in their knee. So these are two different types of uh, hyaluronic acid, 50 and 62%. The ones who got the amniotic procedure had 78%. Then they looked at it out at six months, and the amniotic was at 40, 54% and synvisc was um, uh, 33%. So it was a very statistically significant outcome uh, for that one. I just want to bust a few myths here. Myth one that we hear all the time is that amniotic has no live stem cells. So a lot of competitors put that myth out there. They cherry picked a couple products and found no live stem cells in their own lab, by the way. It wasn't sent to a third-party lab. And I'm not doubting that it was accurate, but if the lab radiates the product or adds too much of the wrong preservative, it kills all the stem cells. And some one of the products that they tested actually doesn't say that they have live stem cells. You know, it's very well known that they don't. So. When you see that in the literature, um, for a few products, that's correct. But here's a few studies showing that it is possible in theory and reality to have live stem cells. So the main substance that's used to as a cryoprotectant when you freeze the product is called DMSO. If you use more than 20% DMSO, you use too much and it will kill all the cells. If you use less than 20%, and our lab uses 3%, then you can cryopreserve the product at negative 80 up to negative 200, and you can keep the cells alive. All right. There are other companies out there that say, oh, you have to keep it at negative 200 for the stem cells to live. That's just not true. This is a very large study um, in 1995 that showed anywhere from 80 to negative 200. It was fine. There was another study done in 2007 looking at four different methods of freezing um, stem cells in uh, cryopreservation. They looked at methods of uh, quick freezing, slow freezing, um, a lot of DMSO, little DMSO. What they showed is that all of them preserve a certain percentage of cell viability. So none of them killed all the cells. And so that was pretty uh, indicative as well. There's an article out of the LA Times in 2007 Researchers found that stem stem cells and hum human amniotic fluid appear to have many of the key therapeutic benefits of embryonic stem cells while avoiding the ethical and uh, medical drawbacks. So that was one article. Another one out of uh, 2009 in Oakland um, showed that it was in a children's hospital, um, that there are far more stem cells in placentas than in other areas of of the body and that they can be used to treat a lot of disorders, okay? So myth number three is that bone marrow is better. This is truly a myth. There's not really one study that can be shown to have statistical significance to amniotic. All of the biologics have been shown to work well, but none have been shown to be superior. Here's some very interesting st statistics. When we're born, one 10,000 cells in the bone marrow is a stem cell. That's not bad, okay? By the age of 70, one in two million cells is a stem cell. 
And those cells don't differentiate as well as they do when you're, you know, very, very young. Um, so this argues for amniotic as from lot to lot to lot, it's much more consistent. We had a third party assay done a few months ago of some of our lots uh, at the lab and showed that they were all very consistent and approximately 25% of all the cells after thawing them out were live stem cells. So that's a lot, it's close to a million. So when you look at, um, and then every lot was pretty consistent with that. Um, and then you have additional elements in amniotics, such as the exosomes, the messenger RNA, the cytokines, all that stuff is not present in, in bone marrow. The myth number four is that it's not FDA approved. So it's quote, no good. Well, it can't be FDA approved. We talked about that earlier. It can't be approved or denied because it's not considered a drug. It's a biologic and a biologic can't have a label. Um, so it's regulated under the uh, Code of Federal Regulations, Part 1271 as a biologic and physicians are deemed to be able to use it as they deem it to be effective for patients and safe. Okay. Now, in conclusion, um, regenerative medicine has changed the way we're looking at orthopedic medicine and other areas of medicine. Now we have non-surgical treatments that can alter the conditions by repair, regeneration, and long-term relief. I don't like to use the words heal or cure, okay? Um, specifically because you have to be realistic. And I'll give you an example. If you have a rotator cuff tendonitis or a bursitis, it does really, really well with those conditions. If you have a small tear or a partial thickness tear, it does really, really well with those conditions too. But if you have a full thickness tear with some retraction, where there's, you know, let's say uh, close to a centimeter of retraction, it is not going to span that gap. It's not going to bring that back together. You have to be realistic. You know, it's not going to completely cure COPD. It may just help a lot with how much oxygen you need or how far you're able to walk and things like that. Uh, no particular, particular treatment method has been shown su to be superior. All are beneficial. These are safe outpatient treatments with the amniotic, uh, and they've been shown overall to be over 80% effective. It, it doesn't require any harvesting, and there's no ethical considerations. Um, most of the myths that are surrounding amniotic stem cell therapy have been perpetuated by competitors who are trying to preserve their market share with another material. Um, and in the studies that we've put out and we've been combining them with others for meta-analyses, over 85% of patients in peer-reviewed studies are achieving excellent outcomes while avoiding or significantly delaying the need for surgery. So I'm gonna get to the questions in a moment, but as a thank you for spending time with us, if you book your appointment with us today or tomorrow, and I will pull the offer up here. Okay, so the offer should show on the right there. As a thank you for spending time with us, um, if you book your appointment within the next 24 hours, you will get a free consultation and $500 off your procedure or 20%, whichever is the higher number, okay? Um, in, apart from those two offers, you just can't combine it with any, any additional offers. Um, so visit us at r3stemcell.com uh, to find the closest location to you or just call us at 844-GET-STEM. We're adding new locations all the time. Um, so if you don't see one, just give us a call. They may just not have been added yet. Um, we vet our, our locations, our centers of excellence very heavily to make sure that they're gonna offer you the best treatments. Okay, so you, there's no special code, right? If you call, you just have to say, hey, I saw the webinar, yada, yada. Um, but if you want to, you can click through to the, uh, let me just see what other questions that we have. All right, my aunt, age 67, has kidney issues. Does amniotic treatment get these folks off dialysis, dialysis or slow down chronic kidney disease? So um, our providers have had great success
with those who are trying to avoid dialysis and are stage three or better. So if they're already on dialysis, I don't know that it would really be that as effective, okay, um, for a few reasons. But with the stage three or better, um, our providers are having really, really, really good results. And they do a combination. So they do um, almost like a, a, a customized a nutritional infusion where they'll do um, almost like a Myers cocktail and, and based on blood work, whatever the patient additionally needs. And then they'll do amniotic treatments as well, um, along with a nutritional protocol. Um, and it's been really effective at helping patients avoid the need for dialysis. Um, we also have some centers that have a 100% wound healing guarantee. So for instance, if you have a diabetic ulcer and it's just not healing, then the studies are amazingly, remarkably effective for, um, with this membrane product from the uh, uh, amniotic uh, membrane. And I mean, it's, it's healing is over twice as fast um, than what you see with traditional uh, like aplograph or things like that. So, all right. Any other, uh, you guys can ask me anything. Any other questions? Nothing yet. Okay. So if you go on r3stemcell.com, if you click on the YouTube link at the top, we have 35 videos on our YouTube channel that, you know, for instance, one explains the difference between PRP versus stem cell therapy. Another one presents all the latest research on stem cell therapy for wound healing, stem cell therapy for knee arthritis. We have one on meniscal repair. Um, we have others on elbow tendonitis. Um, there's a new one we're putting together on stem cell therapy for pelvic pain. A decent sized study just came out showing how well it works for that. So if you have questions that you think about later, you can, like I said, either call us at 844-GET-STEM. You can also email us go at r3stemcell.com. Um, and yeah, also um, we're on Facebook, messages there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off, um, and uh, I'll just look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you very, very much for attending. Have a great evening.